Today, I thought we would look at LED lighting and in particular dimmer control. The reason for this video was a few weeks ago, I bought a dimmer package. I think this came from Costco. I think they had a pretty good price on the two pack, but it's made by Fight Electric. It says ideal for LED lighting. And originally I even bought the LED dimmable bulbs from Fight also at the same visit. I actually installed one in my the breakfast room area that we have that I had a dimmer on. So I replaced the LED the actual incandescent bulbs with LEDs and I put the correct dimmer in for the LEDs. The the problem being with this dimmer once I installed this dimmer, although it wasn't a big issue, it, it would cut on up high, it would cut on and off fine. It would dim down once it was on, it would dim down to the lowest level and have a light glow, it was nice. But if you want to cut it off down low, somewhere below 25% or so, if you cut it off and want to cut it back on, well, it would not fire off the LED bulbs. And just a minor inconvenience, I mean, you, you could even put some kind of mechanical stop there or make that where it wouldn't go down below. So it'll just fire off at that level every time, but it still wouldn't dim down really low. But not a huge issue except for I had this one in particular on a three-way switch combination, so I could cut... I could actually cut this light off and on from two different locations. And if this was cut off down low, and of course you cut it on from a, the other location or try to cut it on from the other location, of course, no dice, so it won't cut on. So that could be a little bit inconvenient depending on if it's on the end of the hallway or other end of the room like mine. Um, pretty annoying when you go to flip the switch on the light just don't come on somebody's got to go over and actually cut this up close to 25 30 percent for it to come on so mentioning that to a friend of mine at work he mentioned that um that lutron i'm not sure diva's the only uh the one that does it but but they say they are especially for leds compact fluorescence halogen and they'll, they'll do incandescent, they'll do it all. So this one's a little bit different. So I wanna show the differences in these. Instead of showing it in the real world, I figured I'd set it up on the bench and just show them side by side or one after the other and just show what I'm talking about and, and, um, and the differences between the two. So uh, we'll get into it, we'll hook it up. We'll start off with this one. We're gonna leave this wire unhook this for three-way applications like I have in my breakfast area. I'm going to use this quick test device. Um, I've always used a chia cord, just a, a pigtail on a bench. Not near as safe if you don't watch what you're doing. I watch BigClive.com. He's one of my favorite YouTubers. If you haven't seen BigClive.com, check it out. It's awesome. But I saw him using this quick test and I just immediately thought it was neat because you got the, the spring loaded quick access terminals, indication for main zone. And you also, with this up of course, it's disconnected so you don't, you're not live here. And you even got a 13 amp fuse in here on this one where that fuse will blow before it goes back to trip to breaker or something did happen on the bench. So I thought very worthwhile investment Thanks a lot to Big Clive. Really like it a lot. Thought it was an awesome idea. So we're just going to hook this dimmer up. Go ahead and hook the ground up also. Now I got several different connection devices here from uh, the regular wire nuts that came with it. I've used wire nuts about all my life. 
They got the newer style wire nuts that actually twist. The types that are more like terminals, but these are one time use and only work well on solid wire, but I have used them with success. We got these for high temperature applications, which is beyond the scope of this video, only ceramic will work. But for today, I wanna look at these kind of new to me, the Wago or Wago, however you say it, the little spring-loaded terminal blocks. Look, so I thought they're neat because you can reuse them and they work with, they work with solid or stranded. Especially for the bench like this, it works really well. So we'll hook these up. Keep that wire out of the way. I just have a regular incandescent bulb on here for now. And of course with an incandescent, it's fine. It's not much light, of course, but all the way down, incandescent, no problem. I have a, a, a lot older LED bulb, one of the first dimmable type that I had. And it actually works. It actually works fine, except for it don't want to come back on until you get somewhere around 25% or so. But it'll, it'll dim down just fine. It's even wanting to come back on. Now, it all depends on the charge of that capacitor that I bleed in the power supply for the unit. Now I'm gonna, I've had good luck with these Crees so far. I've changed a lot of mine out to the Cree. That's all I have available right now here. That I actually like the ones I have in the house are the Cree. Very similar bulb than the, than the fight, the few that I bought to go with this to start with. But you can see we go to cut it on and nothing. So minor inconvenience here, but if you're on the three-way switch on down the hall, then of course it's not coming on. So we're going up, well finally, somewhere right in there, and of course it's not coming back on, so maybe even above 25%. Of course it dims well, it, once it's on it goes down to a nice glow, just won't come back on. So, we'll leave this in. Just thought I would share that, how even though it says ideal for LED lighting, and I actually originally I bought the bulbs, the, the same fight name brand, actually didn't work so well. Now we'll look at this uh, Lutron. This just happens to be the part number, the one that I'm I'm using. It's 150 watt for LED, 600 watt for halogen or incandescent, I think. Yeah. So 150 watts of LED is quite a good bit. All right. So the white and I'm pretty sure the white and red I'm gonna have to cap off. So here we go. Yep, the, the red with the white, we just cap off for a single pole. I'll use it when I put it on my three-way inside, but for right now, we'll just, we'll just use another one of these handy little spring terminals. Make sure we cap that off so it don't touch anything on the bench. Let's go ahead and hook the ground up as well. All right, we'll power it up. Let's turn this the right way so you can see it correctly 
we're powered up all the way down and immediately without even adjusting this pot this one actually seems to work from the factory setting but one thing I wanted to share about this one if we look here it tells us about the dimming range adjustment so when we do get in that situation we have a slider we can go clockwise or up or counterclockwise down to decrease the brightness initial setting right here I'll make sure you can see that there's a little lever a little black lever right there on the bottom left you can adjust that plus or minus so we can make that the bottom minimum range, we can make that whatever we would like. We can go all the way up to there and it won't go below that level. So that's even neat. Maybe you're in a big, a big room with a big chandelier or something and maybe you don't want it to go below a certain level. Maybe you don't want it to go all the way down to a barely, a barely glow where the light's useless. But I found it handy is my fixture had I think five of these bulbs so that's one reason why I had to go up a little bit higher. Well, with the original, the, I had to go up a little bit higher than just the one on the bench because I think it had, you know, five in parallel. So the power supply in here, the, the, the caps that charge up, I think they need a little bit more um, than just 25% or so up on that slider originally. So when I install this, I may have to go up a little bit, but even on the bench even all the way down is working great with this so you know without hooking this up with a three-way switch you know you get it i mean it's just so much more convenient i do want to go ahead since i did check the other one with the older led check this one all the way down it even works with the old one too the one of the first dimmable LEDs I had, no problems whatsoever. So, of course the incandescent shouldn't be a problem at all. But it will go so low that um, you might on the incandescent, you might wanna set the glow maybe all the way up to give you some light, so that'll be, that'll be really neat too. The glow at the bottom won't be just useless on the incandescent. and go all the way up, so. Cause all the way down with the incandescent on this one is, I think it's got a slight glow, but it's not enough to see unless it's in the dark. So, so bumping this up, fires off, barely, barely. Starting to put out a little bit of usable light there, so. So I thought that was really handy. Now I know that this, I think this dimmer did cost probably twice what these dimmers cost. I will say that uh, for a positive for these. But in an area where it can give you major inconveniences like, like this one did, you know, it does pay to kind of look into which dimmer you're getting and, and uh, get the right one for your application. At this point, I don't know a lot about the Lutron, but I definitely, from this point forward, I'm gonna use the Lutrons for all of my dimmers that's on my three-way um, applications. And that way I just, I can set that, no matter what bugs in the future I put in it, if I choose to change, I can set this. So um, I just thought I would, uh, sh would share this information. Also, another thing, just while we're talking about LED bulbs, I just thought I would mention there's so many different types out there. A lot of people probably know, but just to mention, look at your color temperature of your bulbs. You don't wanna, especially in a light that has multiple bulbs, you don't wanna mix, say, 3000K and 4000K uh, color temperature lights. It'll give you a, a real inconsistent and really an undesired effect. So whether you like the soft white or the daylight, the more 4,000K, you know, whichever you choose. I, I really like the soft white 
more like the 2700 to 3000K. Um, it's kind of the light that I have on my bench typically. Um, you get above 3000K, it is a brighter, getting more white. For me personally, once I get on up into cool or daylight, um, sometimes they can get a little bit blue, almost too white where they get into that blue. I don't really like the blue effect. Sometimes I think they're fine for a kitchen to be that daylight or up to 4,000, but just thought I would share that. Um, I always keep your bulbs, whatever you desire, try to keep them the same. And, and the reason I mention that, when you go to buy an LED bulb, it's worth, you know, it used to be you could just buy a soft white light bulb. That was your most typical. But you got to be real careful of what you buy because you might buy one thing different from Home Depot or Lowe's, wherever you go to get your bulbs. And uh, they might be a totally different uh, color temperature than what you have. So try to try to keep up with what you use and what's fixture and um, try not to mix them up. So I just thought I would share the differences in these dimmers with you. The two that, that I have found recently that probably the first ones that I bought that said they were specifically for LED type lighting or, or would do all around lighting. So just thought I would share the issues I had with it. And just... To, just the differences in the two that that I had bought. Now there's, I'm sure there's several others out there. I just wanted to mention these two and the differences and how this one seems to be the one that's gonna come through for me. It seems to be all around great dimmer. So if you have an assembly issue, I hope you got something out of it today. If you, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe and thank you for watching.